Hello guys, welcome to the English Easier with Eric. In this video, you will listen to some daily English conversations in different situations and places. Definitely, you will learn useful vocabulary, phrases, and improve your English speaking and listening skills. Let's take a look. Looking for a job. Hey, I heard you're looking for a job. How's the search going? It's been a bit challenging, to be honest. There are so many options out there, and it's hard to find the right fit. I've been browsing through job boards and sending out applications, but the responses have been limited so far. I understand how frustrating it can be. Have you tried networking and reaching out to contacts in your industry? Sometimes, personal connections can lead to great opportunities. Yes, I've been reaching out to my network and attending industry events. It's definitely helpful to have connections who can vouch for you. I'm also considering expanding my search and exploring different industries or roles that align with my skills. That's a smart approach. Being open-minded can lead you to unexpected but fulfilling opportunities. Have you considered working with a career coach? or utilizing job search resources to enhance your chances? Yes, I've been researching career coaches and job search resources online. I think it would be beneficial to have expert guidance and support during this process. It's important to stay motivated and focused. Absolutely. Remember, job hunting can be a roller coaster ride, but perseverance pays off. Keep refining your resume, honing your skills, and staying positive. The right opportunity will come along. Thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate your support. I'll keep pushing forward and exploring all avenues. With determination and a proactive mindset, I believe I'll find the right job soon. I have faith in you. Don't hesitate to reach out if you need any help or want to bounce off ideas. Good luck with your job search. Sleep deprived. Hey, you look exhausted. Are you okay? You seem sleep deprived. Egg, I haven't been getting enough sleep lately. Work has been demanding. And I've been staying up late trying to catch up on everything. It's taking a toll on me. I can imagine how tough that must be. Lack of sleep can really affect our well-being. Have you tried any strategies to help improve your sleep? I've attempted a few things, like creating a bedtime routine and avoiding caffeine in the evenings. But it's been challenging to stick to them consistently. Maybe you could consider scheduling some dedicated downtime for yourself even if it's just for a short nap or a break during the day. Prioritizing rest is important for your overall health and productivity. You're right. I need to make self-care a priority and find a better balance. I'll try incorporating some relaxation techniques and ensure I get enough rest moving forward. That's a good plan. Remember, taking care of yourself is essential. If you need any support or someone to talk to, I'm here for you. Thanks, I appreciate that. It means a lot to have someone understanding. I'll make an effort to prioritize my sleep and seek help if needed. Going out. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. Hey, I'm in the mood to go out tonight. Are you up for some fun? Absolutely. I could use a break from the routine. Any ideas on where we should go? Well, there's this new restaurant downtown that I've heard great things about. They have a diverse menu and live music on Fridays. 
What do you think? That sounds perfect. I've been meaning to try that place. Shall we make a reservation to ensure we get a table? Good idea. I'll call and make a reservation for two. What time works for you? How about 7 30 p.m.? That should give us enough time to relax and enjoy the evening. Sounds good. I'll book it for 7 30 p.m. tonight. Looking forward to trying out the food and enjoying the live music with you. Me too. It's going to be a fantastic night out. Let's plan to meet a little earlier so we can catch up before dinner. Agreed. Let's meet at 7 p.m. outside the restaurant. We can grab a drink nearby and chat before our reservation. Perfect. I'm excited. See you at 7 p.m. Let's make tonight memorable and have a great time. Absolutely. It's going to be a night to remember. See you soon. The different vermin. We all have different burdens that all seem to cause disturbance. Calling a hospital. Hi, I'm calling because my friend was admitted to your hospital earlier today. I wanted to check on their condition and get some updates, if possible. Of course, I understand your concern. Can you please provide me with your friend's full name and date of admission? I'll check their status for you. Sure, their name is John Smith, and they were admitted this morning around 10 a.m. due to a car accident. Thank you for the information. Let me check the records. Oh, yes, here it is. John Smith is currently stable and resting. He underwent a successful surgery earlier today to address his injuries. The medical team is monitoring his progress closely. That's a relief to hear. Can I speak to the attending physician or nurse to get more details about his treatment plan? I'm sorry, but I'm unable to transfer your call directly. However, I can pass along your request to the medical team and they will get back to you as soon as they can. That would be great. Please let them know that. I'm anxious to hear about John's condition and would appreciate any updates they can provide. I will convey your message to the appropriate personnel and they will reach out to you promptly. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No, that's all for now. Thank you for your help and for taking the time to check on John. I'll be eagerly awaiting their call. You're welcome. I understand the importance of keeping loved ones informed. We'll do our best to provide you with the necessary updates. Take care and please don't hesitate to contact us if you have any further questions or concerns. Problems. I think we need to talk about our marital problems. Lately, it feels like we've been drifting apart. I've noticed that too. It's been hard to connect with each other like we used to. What do you think is causing this? I think it's a combination of things. We've both been so busy with work and the kids, we hardly have any time for ourselves or each other. It's like we're just coexisting. You're right. Our hectic schedules have taken a toll on our relationship. Maybe we need to prioritize quality time together and make an effort to reconnect. We need to remember why we fell in love in the first place. I agree. We should set aside dedicated time each week for just the two of us, without any distractions. We need to communicate more openly, too. Bottling up our frustrations isn't helping anyone. Absolutely. We need to create a safe space for honest conversations where we can express our feelings without fear of judgment. It's important for us to actively listen and understand each other's perspectives. I also think seeking professional help could be beneficial. A marriage counselor could provide guidance and help us work through our issues. That's a good idea. Let's take that step together. Our relationship is worth fighting for, and I believe we can overcome these challenges with the right support. I love you, and I'm committed to making our marriage stronger. Let's work together. And prioritize our family's happiness and well being. I love you too. I'm hopeful that by addressing these marital problems head on, we can rebuild the love and connection we've been missing.
Our family deserves a happy and thriving home. Financial problems. I think we need to talk about our financial problems. It's becoming increasingly difficult to make ends meet, and it's causing a lot of stress in our lives. I know. The bills keep piling up, and it feels like we're constantly struggling to make payments. We need to find a way to get our finances back on track. I've been thinking about it, and I believe we need to create a budget and stick to it. We have to prioritize our expenses and cut back on unnecessary spending. You're right. We need to be more disciplined with our money. It might be tough at first, but I think we can find areas where we can reduce our expenses. We should also consider finding additional sources of income. Maybe I can take up a part-time job, or we can explore other ways to supplement our earnings. That's a good idea. It's time to explore all our options. We might need to make some sacrifices in the short term, but it will be worth it in the long run. I think it would also be helpful for us to seek financial advice. Maybe we can consult a financial planner who can guide us in managing our money more effectively. I agree. We shouldn't be ashamed to ask for help. Getting professional advice can give us a clear picture of our financial situation and provide us with strategies to improve it. Together, we can overcome these financial challenges. Let's support each other and stay focused on our goals. Our family's financial stability is important, and I believe we can achieve it with determination and perseverance. I'm with you. We'll work through this together and come out stronger. Our love and determination will guide us through these tough times. Balancing work and family life. I think we need to have a serious conversation about balancing our work and family life. Lately, it feels like we're constantly juggling and struggling to find a healthy equilibrium. I couldn't agree more. It's been challenging to give our family the time and attention they deserve while also meeting the demands of our careers. We need to find a better balance. I think we should start by evaluating our priorities. What truly matters to us? We need to be intentional about creating quality time for our family and ourselves. Absolutely. It's time to set boundaries and establish dedicated family time. We should carve out specific days or evenings where work takes a backseat and we focus solely on being present with our loved ones. And we also need to learn to delegate and ask for help when needed. It's not healthy for us to shoulder all the responsibilities alone. We should consider sharing household tasks and seeking support from family and friends. I agree. We should be open to accepting help and realize that it doesn't make us any less capable or responsible. It's about building a support system that allows us to thrive in both our personal and professional lives. Maybe we can also explore flexible work options or negotiate for a better work-life balance with our employers. It's worth discussing and finding ways to reduce the stress and demands on our time. That's a good point. We should advocate for ourselves and communicate our needs to our employers. It's important to find a work environment that values work-life balance and supports the well-being of its employees. Ultimately, we need to prioritize our family's happiness and well-being. Our time together is precious and we must make a conscious effort to cherish and nurture our relationships. I completely agree. Let's make a commitment to each other and our family. It won't be easy, but with open communication, mutual support, and a shared vision, we can find the balance we need to thrive in both our work and family life. Misunderstanding
we need to talk about this misunderstanding that's been causing tension between us. It's important to address it and clear the air. I agree. It's been weighing on my mind, and I want to understand your perspective better. Let's talk openly and honestly. First, I want to apologize if I said or did anything that hurt you. It wasn't my intention, and I value our relationship. Thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate your apology. I also want to clarify my feelings and the reasons behind my reaction. I felt hurt and misunderstood, but I want to find a resolution. I'm glad you're sharing your feelings. Please know that I'm here to listen and understand. Let's take the time to explain our perspectives without judgment. It's important for both of us to actively listen and give each other the benefit of the doubt. Misunderstandings can arise from miscommunication or different interpretations, and we should be open to seeing things from each other's point of view. I completely agree. Let's try to find common ground and work towards a solution. We need to communicate more effectively and seek clarification when needed. Yes, clear communication is key in preventing future misunderstandings. We should also be willing to ask for clarification and not jump to conclusions. Moving forward, let's make a conscious effort to be more patient and understanding with each other. Our relationship is worth resolving this misunderstanding, and I believe we can come out stronger from this experience. I'm grateful for your willingness to work things out. Our bond is important to me, and I want to rebuild the trust and connection we had before this misunderstanding. Thank you. Let's learn from this experience and grow together. By fostering open and honest communication, we can overcome any misunderstanding that comes our way. Prepare to be captivated, moved, and deeply touched as we embark on this journey of love and connection. Join us as we dive into the world of heart-to-heart -heart conversations between a mom and son, where the magic lies within every word spoken and every moment shared. Let the journey begin. Hello guys, welcome to the English Easier with Eric. In this video, you will listen to some daily English conversations in different situations and places. Definitely, you will learn useful vocabulary, phrases, and improve your English speaking and listening skills. Let's take a look. Prioritizing health, a conversation on well-being. Hi, sweetheart. I wanted to have a conversation about your health and well-being. How are you feeling overall? Hi, mom. I've been feeling a bit tired lately, and I've noticed I haven't been eating as well as I should. I think I need to make some changes. I'm glad you brought this up, my dear. Taking care of your health is important. Let's discuss some ways we can improve your well-being together. I think I need to focus on getting better sleep and establishing a consistent sleep schedule. I've been staying up too late, and it's affecting my energy levels. That's a great observation, sweetheart. Having a consistent sleep routine is crucial for your overall health and mental well-being. Let's work on creating a bedtime routine that promotes better sleep. I also want to make healthier food choices. I've been relying on fast food and snacks too much. It's time to incorporate more fruits, vegetables, and home-cooked meals into my diet. I'm proud of your awareness, my love. Nutrition plays a significant role in our well-being. Let's plan meals together and explore new recipes that are nutritious and delicious. Exercise is another area I want to focus on. I need to incorporate physical activity into my routine to boost my energy and overall fitness. That's a fantastic goal, sweetheart. We can research different types of exercises that interest you and create a workout plan. It's important to find activities that you enjoy to stay motivated. Thank you for being supportive, Mom. Your guidance and encouragement mean a lot to me. I want to prioritize my health and make positive changes. I'm always here for you, my dear. Your health and well-being are important to me. 
we'll work together to create a healthy lifestyle that benefits you in the long run. Remember, small steps lead to big changes, and I'm proud of you for taking this initiative. Building independence, setting boundaries and responsibilities. Hi, sweetheart. I wanted to talk to you about setting boundaries and responsibilities. As you grow older, it's important to take on more independence and contribute to our household. Hi, mom. I understand. I want to be more responsible and help out around the house. What do you have in mind? Well, let's start with your personal space. It's important to keep your room clean and organized. Could you commit to tidying up your room regularly? Absolutely, Mom. I'll make it a habit to keep my room neat and tidy. It will also help me stay focused and organized. That's great to hear, my dear. It's not just about cleanliness. It's about taking ownership of your personal space. Additionally, how about we divide some household chores? It will teach you valuable life skills. I'm on board with that, Mom. I can take care of setting the table for dinner and helping with dishes. It'll give you some relief and I'll learn to be more responsible. I appreciate your willingness to help. And it's an excellent way for you to develop responsibility and contribute to our family's well-being. Remember, we're a team and every contribution counts. I understand, Mom. I want to be an active member of our family and take on responsibilities. I'm proud of your maturity and eagerness to step up. Setting boundaries and taking on responsibilities will not only benefit our family, but also foster your personal growth and independence. Thank you for guiding me, Mom. I want to become more responsible and learn valuable life lessons along the way. You're welcome, my dear. Together, we'll navigate this journey of growing up setting boundaries, and embracing responsibilities. Your commitment is commendable, and I'm here to support and guide you every step of the way. Weekend Adventure, Making Plans for Quality Time Hey, sweetie, the weekend is almost here. Do you have any plans or ideas for how we can make the most of our time together? Hi, Mom. I was thinking it would be fun to go hiking and explore a new trail. The weather is supposed to be great, and I know you enjoy nature too. That sounds like a wonderful idea. Spending time in nature and breathing in fresh air is always rejuvenating. Let's pack some snacks and make it a memorable hiking adventure. Awesome. I'll make sure to research a trail that suits our level of difficulty and offers beautiful views. I'm excited to embark on this little adventure with you. I'm excited too, my dear. It's important to connect with nature and create lasting memories together. We can also bring a camera and capture some stunning photographs along the way that's a great suggestion, Mom. We can document our adventure and create a photo album or share them with our family and friends. I love that idea. It's a fantastic way to preserve our special moments and share our experiences. Besides hiking, is there anything else you'd like to do during the weekend? Well, I heard about a new ice cream parlor in town. It would be great to indulge in some delicious ice cream treats after our hike. That sounds like the perfect reward for a day well spent. Let's definitely treat ourselves to some sweet delights and enjoy a well-deserved ice cream feast. I can't wait, Mom. It's going to be a fantastic weekend filled with adventure, nature, and mouth-watering treats. I couldn't agree more, my love. 
I cherish these moments we share, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to create beautiful memories with you. Let's make this weekend one to remember. Strength and Embrace, Sharing Emotional Support Hey, my sweet boy. How are you feeling today? Hi, Mom. I've been feeling a bit down lately. School has been overwhelming, and I've been dealing with some personal challenges. I'm here for you, my love. It's normal to have you peace and downs, and I want you to know that you're not alone. You can always lean on me for support. Thank you, Mom. It means a lot to hear that. I've been struggling with self-doubt and feeling like I'm not good enough. Oh, sweetheart, I can assure you that you are more than enough. You have unique strengths and qualities that make you special. Remember, everyone has moments of self-doubt, but it doesn't define your worth. It's just hard sometimes, Mom. I compare myself to others and feel like I don't measure up. It's natural to compare ourselves, but it's essential to focus on your own journey and progress. You have your own path to follow, and your growth is personal and unique. I believe in you, and I'm proud of who you are. Thank you for always being there, Mom. Your words give me strength. I'll always be your biggest supporter, my dear. Whenever you need to talk or simply have a shoulder to lean on, I'm here for you. You're never alone in this journey of life. I'm grateful to have you as my mom. Your love and support make a world of difference. The bond between a mother and child is unbreakable, my love. We'll face the challenges together, celebrate the victories, and embrace each other through it all. You are loved, cherished, and valued. I love you, Mom. Thank you for being my rock. I love you too, my precious one. Our love will always provide you with the strength and resilience to face any storm that comes your way. Ready to take your travel conversations to the next level. Join us on a linguistic journey where we'll equip you with the tips and techniques to speak about your travels with confidence and charisma. Hello guys, welcome to the English Easier with Eric. In this video, you will listen to some daily English conversations in different situations and places. Definitely, you will learn useful vocabulary, phrases, and improve your English speaking and listening skills. Let's take a look. What's your favorite mode of transportation? Hey, what's your favorite mode of transportation when it comes to traveling? That's a tough question. I enjoy different modes of transportation depending on the destination, but if I had to pick one, I would say train travel is my favorite. Train travel can be quite charming. What makes it your preferred choice? There's something nostalgic and romantic about train journeys. The rhythmic motion, the passing landscapes, and the opportunity to meet fellow travelers create a unique experience. It allows me to sit back relax, and truly immerse myself in the journey. That sounds lovely. Have you had any particularly memorable train journeys? Absolutely. One of my most memorable train journeys was traveling through the Swiss Alps on the Glacier Express. The panoramic views of snow-capped mountains, quaint villages, and picturesque valleys were simply breathtaking. I can only imagine the stunning vistas. Are there any other modes of transportation that you find enjoyable? I also enjoy road trips, especially when exploring scenic routes and remote areas. The freedom to stop wherever I want and take detours to hidden gems adds a sense of adventure to the journey. Road trips definitely offer a lot of flexibility and spontaneity. Any other modes of transportation you're fond of? I also find boat rides fascinating 
Whether it's cruising along the serene waters of Halong Bay or taking a scenic ferry ride to visit islands, being on the water provides a unique perspective and a tranquil atmosphere. It sounds like you've had some incredible travel experiences. Thanks for sharing your favorite mode of transportation. You're welcome. Each mode of transportation offers its own charm and allows us to see the world in different ways. Happy travels, and may you have wonderful journeys ahead. Have you ever experienced any culture shocks? Hey, have you ever experienced any culture shocks while traveling? Oh, definitely. Cultural differences can sometimes be surprising and eye-opening. One instance that stands out is when I traveled to Japan. Japan is known for its unique culture. Could you share a specific culture shock you encountered there? One of the biggest culture shocks for me was the concept of etiquette and bowing. The level of respect and formality in daily interactions was something I had to adapt to. It was fascinating to observe how deeply rooted it is in Japanese society. That sounds like an interesting experience. Were there any other instances of culture shock during your travels? Absolutely. When I visited India, the vibrant chaos of the streets, the overwhelming diversity, and the sensory overload were all quite different from what I was used to. It took some time to adjust, but it was an incredible cultural immersion. It's amazing how travel can expose us to new perspectives. Have you found culture shocks to be positive or challenging? It's a bit of both, actually. While culture shocks can be initially challenging and make you step out of your comfort zone, they also broaden your horizons and make you appreciate the diversity in the world. It's a valuable learning experience. I couldn't agree more. Embracing and understanding different cultures can be truly enriching. Thanks for sharing your experiences. You're welcome. It's all part of the adventure. Cultural shocks remind us that the world is a fascinating and diverse place. Happy travels! And may you continue to have memorable encounters. Have you ever traveled solo? Hey, have you ever traveled solo? Yes, I have. In fact, I highly recommend it. There's something liberating about exploring new places on your own terms. That's interesting. What made you decide to travel solo? I wanted to challenge myself and step out of my comfort zone. Traveling solo allows for self-discovery, independence, and the freedom to create your own itinerary. Were there any specific destinations that you enjoyed traveling solo to? Definitely. One of my favorite solo trips was to Thailand. The warm hospitality of the locals, the stunning beaches, and the vibrant street markets made it a perfect destination for solo exploration. Did you face any challenges while traveling alone? There were a few challenges, like language barriers and occasional moments of loneliness. However, those challenges were also opportunities to grow and connect with people in unexpected ways. That's inspiring. Do you have any tips for someone considering traveling solo for the first time? Absolutely. Research your destination, stay informed about safety precautions, and trust your instincts. Also, be open to meeting new people and immersing yourself in the local culture. Those are great tips. I might consider traveling solo myself. Any other memorable experiences from your solo adventures? Oh, plenty. From hiking to breathtaking viewpoints to discovering hidden gems off the beaten path, every moment was filled with a sense of freedom and self-discovery. It sounds like an incredible journey. Thanks for sharing your experiences. Solo travel definitely seems like an enriching experience. You're welcome. It truly is. Whether it's a short getaway or a longer trip, solo travel has the potential to be transformative. Where would you go?
Hey, if you had the opportunity to travel anywhere in the world, where would you go? That's a tough question. There are so many amazing places I'd love to explore. But if I had to choose one, I think I would go to the beautiful country of Iceland. Iceland sounds like a fantastic choice. What specifically attracts you to that destination? The stunning landscapes of Iceland, with its volcanoes, glaciers, and hot springs, have always fascinated me. I love to witness the northern lights and take a dip in the famous Blue Lagoon. That sounds like an incredible adventure. Any particular activities or sights you'd want to experience while in Iceland? I definitely want to go hiking in the breathtaking Ursmork Valley and explore the unique ice caves. Also, a road trip along the Ring Road, visiting the waterfalls, black sand beaches, and geothermal areas would be a dream come true. I can imagine the amazing photo opportunities. Is there any other destination on your travel wish list? Absolutely. I have a long list, but one place that stands out is the ancient city of Petra in Jordan. The intricately carved rock architecture and the history behind it is truly fascinating. Petra is on my list too. It must be an incredible sight to behold. Well, I hope you get to visit Iceland and Petra soon. Thank you. The world is full of wonders, and I hope we both get to explore these amazing destinations someday. Ready to take your travel conversations to the next level? Join us on a linguistic journey, where we'll equip you with the tips and techniques to speak about your travels with confidence and charisma. Hello guys, welcome to the English Easier with Eric. In this video, you will listen to some daily English conversations in different situations and places. Definitely, you will learn useful vocabulary, phrases, and improve your English speaking and listening skills. Let's take a look. What's the most beautiful place you've ever visited? Hey, what's the most beautiful place you've ever visited? Oh, that's a tough question. I've been fortunate to visit many breathtaking places, but if I had to pick one, I would say Santorini in Greece. Santorini is known for its stunning views. What made it the most beautiful place for you? The iconic whitewashed buildings perched on cliffs overlooking. The deep blue Aegean Sea created a picturesque landscape that was unlike anything I had ever seen before. The sunsets were absolutely mesmerizing. It sounds absolutely magical. Did you have any memorable experiences in Santorini? Absolutely. Exploring the charming villages like Oya and Fira, tasting delicious Greek cuisine, and relaxing on the unique black sand beaches were all incredible experiences. The warmth and hospitality of the locals made it even more special. I can only imagine how wonderful it must have been. Are there any other destinations that come close to Santorini in terms of beauty? Yes, another place that left me in awe was the Plitvis Lakes National Park in Croatia. The cascading waterfalls, crystal clear lakes, and lush greenery created a natural paradise that felt like stepping into a fairy tale. That sounds like a hidden gem. I'll definitely add it to my travel list. Thanks for sharing your experiences. You're welcome. The world is full of incredible beauty, and exploring these places is a reminder of how diverse and awe-inspiring our planet is. Happy travels! Do you prefer to plan your trips in advance or go with the flow? Hey, when it comes to traveling, do you prefer to plan your trips in advance or go with the flow? That's a great question. Personally, I enjoy a mix of both. I like to have a general outline and keep bookings in place, but I also leave room for spontaneity and flexibility. That sounds like a balanced approach. Could you share why you find it beneficial to plan some aspects ahead of time? Planning in advance helps me secure important reservations like flights and accommodations, especially during peak seasons. 
It also allows me to research and prioritize the must-see attractions or activities, ensuring I don't miss out on anything I really want to experience. I see the advantages. What about the go with the flow aspect? How does that enhance your travel experiences? Going with the flow allows me to be open to unexpected opportunities and discoveries. It gives me the freedom to explore off the beaten path places, interact with locals, and immerse myself in the local culture. It's often in those spontaneous moments that I've had some of my most memorable travel experiences. That's fascinating. Have you ever had any surprising or unexpected encounters during your trips? Absolutely. From stumbling upon vibrant festivals to striking up conversations with locals that led to hidden gems, those spontaneous moments have added depth and richness to my journeys. It sounds like a perfect balance between planning and embracing the unknown. I'll definitely consider incorporating more flexibility into my travel plans. Thanks for sharing your perspective. You're welcome. Finding the right balance between planning and spontaneity can make each trip unique and exciting. Happy travels, and may you have unforgettable experiences along the way. What was your favorite part of the trip? Hey, I heard you recently went on a trip. What was your favorite part of the trip? Oh, it's hard to choose just one favorite part, but if I had to pick, it would be exploring the ancient ruins of Mako Picchu in Peru. That sounds incredible. What made it so special for you? The whole experience was awe-inspiring. Standing atop the mountain, surrounded by the majestic ruins and breathtaking scenery, it felt like stepping into another world. The sense of history and mystery was truly captivating. I can only imagine. Did you take any guided tours or explore on your own? I decided to take a guided tour to learn about the history and significance of the site. Our guide shared fascinating stories and insights, making the experience even more enriching. That's a great way to immerse yourself in the culture and history of a place. Were there any other memorable moments from your trip? Absolutely. The vibrant markets in Cusco and trying delicious Peruvian cuisine were definitely highlights. The local hospitality and warmth of the people left a lasting impression as well. It sounds like a truly remarkable journey. Any other destinations on your travel bucket list? Oh, there are so many. I've always dreamt of exploring the ancient temples of Angkor Wat in Cambodia and going on a safari in the Serengeti. Those are amazing choices. I hope you get to fulfill your travel dreams soon. Thanks for sharing your favorite part of the trip. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Traveling opens up a world of experiences and memories that stay with you forever. How do you usually budget for your trips? How do you usually budget for your trips? Great question. I believe in careful planning and setting a realistic budget before embarking on any adventure. That's smart. Could you share some tips on how you manage your travel expenses? Of course. Firstly, I research the average costs of transportation, accommodation, and daily expenses in the destination. This helps me estimate the overall budget. That sounds like a good starting point. Do you have any strategies for saving money on accommodation? Absolutely. I often compare prices on different booking websites and look for discounted rates or special offers. Sometimes, I opt for budget-friendly accommodations like hostels or guest houses instead of fancy hotels. That's a clever way to cut costs. And what about food expenses? Any tips there? When it comes to food, I try to balance eating out at local restaurants with self-catering. I explore street food options and local markets, which are not only delicious but also affordable. I'll keep that in mind. How about transportation? Any budget-friendly ideas? 
I always research the most cost-effective transportation options in advance. Depending on the destination, I might use public transport, walk, or rent a bike instead of relying solely on taxis or private cars. That makes sense. Are there any other budgeting strategies you follow? Yes, I also allocate a specific amount for sightseeing and activities. I prioritize the ones that truly interest me and look for any discounts or free attractions available. Those are excellent tips. Thank you for sharing your budgeting insights. I'll definitely apply them to my future trips. You're welcome. Budgeting for trips can be challenging, but with careful planning and smart choices, it becomes more manageable. Happy travels. Smart ways to improve your speaking skills. Everybody on the face, shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight. And that's it for today's English lesson. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If you enjoyed this lesson, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more English language learning videos. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below and we'll do our best to respond. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future English lessons. And if you want to take your English learning to the next level, check out our channel more often. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next English lesson.